Hey everybody, I'm here to share with you the good news. A story of profound GOP heroism from just this week, okay? The party of free speech and law and order has bravely punished two of its evil members for saying things that the party doesn't like and for wickedly trying to investigate an attempt to overthrow the government. So kidding aside, uh, the Republican Party has given us yet another story that demonstrates that they are absolutely committed to becoming the personal cult of Donald Trump. And that story is this. The RNC, the Republican National Committee, has formally censured Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, who are two Republican congresspeople. Now, the RNC is, is like the nucleus of the Republican Party cell, all right? They're the group within the group that creates the Republican platform, even though the Republicans don't have much of a platform these days besides critical race theory and do whatever the opposite is that Joe Biden wants to do. They're also the group that creates the messaging and organizes the fundraising, all right? So they are very powerful and influential within the GOP, and they have formally censured Kinzinger and Cheney. Why would they do that? Why would the party of free speech and free thought and independent thinking, why would they punish two of their members? Well, because, in fact, the GOP is a cult, and Kinsinger and Cheney, in very specific ways, have deviated from the cult dogma. They have committed two cardinal sins. Number one, they have criticized publicly and consistently Donald Trump for a variety of reasons. But Donald Trump is the central figure of the Republican religion. He is like Jesus Christ to them. He's flawless, he's beyond reproach, and don't you dare ever criticize him. And they have, consistently and publicly. That's blasphemous enough. The second thing they've done is arguably even worse, which is that Cheney and Kinzinger are participating in the House Select Committee investigating January 6th, which is organized and led by Democrats. And the purpose of the committee is to investigate the January 6, 2021 insurrection, which Donald Trump started. So not only are they talking smack about the Republican God, they are actively trying to, I don't know, usurp him or whatever by investigating the January 6 committee. So this is blasphemy beyond reproach, and it has no place in the GOP cult. So they've been formally censured. Um, so the reporting says the RNC members on Friday voted to censure Cheney and Kinzinger for serving on the January 6th Select Committee. A reported draft of the resolution, which we'll look at in a second, says the RNC will cease any and all support of the two anti-Trump lawmakers, which is going to be very damaging. That is that is a tremendous pillar of support. Kinzinger is already not going to run due to redistricting issues and the fact that he's persona non grata in the GOP, but Cheney is going to run for re-election, and so she probably needed RNC support. It's going to be a hell of a, an uphill battle without it. Uh, between the lines, the vote serves as a reaffirmation of the party's fealty to former President Trump and his increasingly hard-line defenses of January 6 rioters and attacks on the select committee. The resolution accuses Cheney and Kinzinger of participating in the persecution of ordinary citizens engaged in legitimate discourse with their work on the committee, which is probing the Capitol riot and its underlying causes. RNC chairperson Ronna McDaniel, who, by the way, is Mitt Romney's uh, niece, and she hates her uncle because Donald Trump, whom she loves, also hates her uncle. So there's some, like, Shakespearean drama going on in all this, too. Food for thought said in a statement to Axios following the vote that the legitimate political discourse referred to in the resolution had nothing to do with violence at the Capitol, likely a reference to the rallies that preceded the riot. So what McDaniel and other Republicans are doing, just as a sidebar here, is they're trying to conflate what the January 6th Select Committee is investigating with lawful protests. I want to be very clear. Democrats and Republicans on the House Select Committee for January 6th are not investigating lawful protests. Well, no matter how you feel about it, the Republican Party had every right to bitch and moan about what happened in 2020. They had every right to throw a fit over the fact that their guy lost. Democrats have done it in the past. As long as they do it lawfully, they have every right to exercise the right for lawful protest. That's not what the House Select January 6th Committee is investigating. What they are investigating is the small subset of lawful protesters that engage in unlawful behavior, like breaking and entering into the Capitol building. 
and even worse, even more unlawful, trying to overthrow the government by stopping the certification of the results of the last election, which was a free and fair election, to try to install Donald Trump as a dictator. That was lawful. It was, in my opinion, treasonous. It was certainly insurrectionist. And that's what the House Select Committee is investigating, the people who did it, the people who organized it, the people who contributed to it, and that's fair game. But McDaniel is very disingenuously trying to conflate that with just people lawfully protesting. Cheney and Kinsinger don't give a shit, nor do the Republic, nor do the Democrats, rather, on the committee. They don't give a shit about people lawfully protesting. It's those who did the unlawful things that the, the House Select Committee is going after, and they should. She says, Liz Cheney and Adam Kinsinger crossed a line. That's why the RNC members and myself overwhelmingly support this resolution. Uh, Jamie Ratson, Raskin, who is another member of the January 6th Select Committee and a Democrat, says that Cheney should wear it as a badge of pride. It's a scandal, it's an outrage, and it's a threat to our constitutional order, what they're doing, and generations to come will celebrate the courage of Liz Cheney and Adam Kinsinger. Now, I think that's going too far. Uh, Kinsinger and Cheney are not heroes. They are doing the bare minimum as demanded by their constitutional oath by saying, hey, the free and fair election that happened was free and fair, and you don't get to overthrow the government simply because your loser candidate lost a free and fair election, even if it's our loser candidate. We're not going to support it, we're going to oppose it, and we're going to investigate it when you try to do it anyway. That's a bare minimum we expect from our public servants. It's like going into work and not taking a swing at your boss for no reason. You're not a hero for not taking a swing at your boss for no reason. You're just a guy or a gal doing a job, and you don't get a pat on the back or a medal. You're just a guy doing a thing, and that's how we should treat Cheney and Kinsinger. Um, Representative John Katko, a Republican moderate who voted to impeach Trump the second time and who was also trying to negotiate Republican participation in a uh, House committee investigating January 6th, before his Republican boss, Kevin McCarthy, pulled the rug out from under him and said, no, 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 we're not going to negotiate in good faith. We don't want to participate. Katko says, I think the RNC has its priorities misplaced. I think we should be focused on the elections and not this nonsense, which is a lukewarm rebuke, but he probably doesn't want to be censured either. Let's take a look at the formal resolution, see what some of it says. Um, it says the primary mission of the Republican Party is to elect Republicans who support the United States Constitution and share our values. And by that they mean Republicans who are willing to defy the Constitution by overthrowing the results of a free and fair election when those results are inconvenient. That's what they mean. It's code. Uh, it says that the Biden administration and Democrats in Congress have embarked on a systematic effort to replace liberty with socialism. Don't know what that means. Eliminate border security in favor of lawless open borders, even though the Biden administration has arrested greater numbers and higher rates of illegal entrance into the United States than any president, which suggests the border is not lawless, at least not because of them. Food for thought. Create record inflation designed to steal the American dream from our children and grandchildren. Inflation is COVID-caused and it is global. President Biden is not president of planet Earth. That means he's not responsible for inflation, and in fact, he has taken steps to try to reduce inflation, like the America Competes Act, which recently passed in the House on largely partisan lines, thanks to Democrats. Democrats passed the Competes Act, which will let us compete more favorably with China and more easily create the super or semiconductor chips that are causing the inflation, okay? All but one Republican in the House, Adam Kinzinger, opposed the Competes Act. So Republicans will bitch about inflation because it's politically expedient. They, want to, they do not want to do anything to help it, even though Democrats do. Um, neuter our national defense and a peace through strength foreign policy. Again, President Trump was playing footsie with Vladimir Putin in Russia and Kim Jong-un in uh, North Korea, got nothing out of it. And the military budget under Biden is either at the same level or even higher than it was under uh, from previous budgets under Trump and Obama and Bush. So Biden's, you know, military budget and national defense um, doesn't show any signs of being weaker than the governments that preceded it. Replace President Trump's Operation Warp Speed with incompetence and illegal mandates. I am surprised that they have the uh, fortitude to charge Biden 
with incompetence handling COVID. Okay, so President Trump spent most of his time denying COVID existed or saying it existed, but it was no big deal and it would go away on its own. Or that you should inject bleach into yourself to fight it or like go under a tanning bed or stand under UV lights or put a UV light into your flesh to burn the virus away. He didn't support uh, mask wearing or social distancing. And by the time he left office, only 4% of the American public had been vaccinated, 2 million people. In Biden's first 100 days in office, 200 million vaccinations occurred. At this time, uh, it's like 75% of adults in the United States are fully vaccinated. We have new therapeutics coming. Um, you know, the mandates that were overturned by the Supreme Court were effective in getting people who were reluctant to get vaccinated to become vaccinated. And this is all in spite of the Republican Party actively obstructing Biden's efforts to manage COVID every step of the way. So Biden is succeeding more compared to Trump, despite the fact that Democrats work, tried to work with Trump on COVID and encouraged him to act more, whereas Republicans and conservatives are fighting Biden tooth and nail every step of the way. So I don't know how favorably Trump compares to Biden on COVID. And destroy America's economy with the Green New Deal. I haven't heard shit about the Green New Deal in like three or four years, okay? It came and went. It was like a flare, all right? It was a fart in the wind, like some people might say. Now, I will say America's economy under Biden is doing pretty damn well. Trump drove the economy that he inherited from Obama, which was great, into the toilet and gave it to Biden on his way out the door. Biden inherited a terrible economy from Trump and Trump's stupidity, and he's been, you know— getting us out of it every cent, ever since, okay? President Biden has created more jobs in his first year than any first year under any president. Uh, unemployment rates are down. Uh, the economy is stimulated thanks to the American Rescue Plan that Biden passed, again, on a partisan basis because Republicans wouldn't participate. And uh, we're seeing tremendous growth. So Biden's doing pretty damn well in the economy, better than Trump did, and it's further proof that, generally speaking, the economy does better under Democrats than Republicans, because Republicans suck. Um, winning back the majority in Congress, including the House, the United States House of Representatives, must be the primary goal of the House Republican Conference and requires all Republicans working together to accomplish the same. This is the meat and potatoes. This right here is where they say the quiet part out loud. Cheney and Kinsinger are being punished, not because they're not conservative, not because they don't vote with Republicans. They are conservative, and they do vote Republican, but because they deviate from Republicans in one major way, or two major ways. They think Donald Trump is a moron uh, and, an, and a bad guy and shouldn't be the leader of the party. Again, sin number one. And sin number two, uh, which is related to the first one, they recognize that Donald Trump inspired and actively incited an attempt to overthrow the government, which violates the Constitution. And again, their voting record on pretty much every, they don't like Biden, they don't like Democrats, they vote for Republican policies. They just don't like Trump and want to punish people who uh, you know, participated in one way, shape, or form with the insurrection. But that's not enough. That's politically inexpedient for the Republican Party, and that is why they're being punished here. The conference must design a strategy to stop the radical Biden agenda, radical Biden agenda, and retire Nancy Pelosi, tasks which, again, require all Republicans to pull in the same direction. It doesn't matter that eight times out of 10 or nine times out of 10, Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger do go along with Republican policy and the Republican agenda. The fact that they deviate at all, let alone in a major way like criticizing Trump and look, wanting to look into January 6th, that's unacceptable. It, create, it undermines Republican momentum too much, and they will not tolerate it. The conference must not be sabotaged by Liz Cheney and Adam Kinsinger, who've demonstrated with action and words that they support Democrat efforts to destroy President Trump more than they support winning back a Republican majority in 2022. Again, you compare their voting records, like 94% of the time Liz Cheney voted on Trump-backed measures during Trump's administration. That's damn near 100% of the time. It's just the fact that she thinks he is a lying moron who tried to overthrow the government and sh therefore shouldn't be a leader. Just get him out of the party and let's go back to opposing Democrats. That's what she wants, but that's not enough for them. They don't care because Trump is a religious figure to them. So to criticize him at all is unacceptable. 
uh, have engaged in actions in their positions as members of the January 6th Select Committee not befitting Republican members of Congress, which include the committee's disregard for minority rights, uh, traditional checks and balances, due process, and adherences to other precedent and rules of the House, which seem intent on advancing a political agenda to buoy the Democratic Party's bleak prospects in the upcoming midterm elections. Again, the uh, Speaker Pelosi and House Democrats offered Republicans essentially a 50-50 split on the House committee. They offered to make it bipartisan, a Democratic chair, a Republican vice chair, which they currently have. Cheney is the vice chair. Equal number of members, equal subpoena power, equal rights, all the above. And John Katko negotiated in good faith to get those concessions, and he was given them by Democrats. But he was overruled by another Republican, Kevin McCarthy, because McCarthy wasn't negotiating in good faith and doesn't want an investigation into January 6th. The reason that the minority, the Republican Party, doesn't have more of a presence on the House Select Committee is because of Republican lies and Republican dishonesty and Republican bad faith negotiation. It is entirely, 100 percent, literally their fault. But now the RNC is scapegoating Ken Zinger and Cheney. You guys are participating at all, and that's unacceptable. So let's see. Congressional Republicans bear ultimate responsibility for their own success and failure, and the RNC supports their efforts by denouncing those who deliberately jeopardize victory in November, on which the future of our constitutional republic depends at this critical moment in history. Um, they are both utilizing their past professed political affiliation to mask Democrat abuse of prosecut prosecutorial power for partisan purposes. Therefore, be it resolved, the RNC hereby formally censures Liz Cheney and Adam Kinsinger and shall immediately cease any and all support of them as members of the Republican Party for their behavior, which has been destructive to the institution of the House of Representatives, the Republican Party, and our republic, and is inconsistent with the position of the conference. There you have it. Um, the Republican Party offers no room for dissent, uh, no room for self-reflection and introspection. They don't care. Um, this is the personal cult of Donald Trump, and anything that undermines that mission statement is going to be harshly punished. So that's why Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger are censured. Now, I do want to look at their uh, comments on the matter. So Liz Cheney says on Twitter, the leaders of the Republican Party have made themselves willing hostages to a man who admits he tried to overturn a presidential election and suggests he would pardon January 6 defendants, some of whom have been charged with seditious conspiracy. I'm a constitutional conservative, and I do not recognize those in my party who have abandoned the Constitution to embrace Donald Trump. History will be their judge. I will never stop fighting for our constitutional republic, no matter what. So that's from Cheney. Kinzinger says... I've been a member of the Republican Party long before Donald Trump entered the field. My values and core beliefs remain the same and have not wavered. I'm a conservative who believes in truth, freedom, and upholding the Constitution of the United States. Rather than focus their efforts on how to help the American people, my fellow Republicans have chosen to censure two lifelong members of their party for simply upholding their oaths of office. They've allowed conspiracies and toxic tribalism to hinder their ability to see clear-eyed. My efforts will continue to be focused on standing up for the truth and fighting to and working to fight the political matrix that's led us to this point. All right there, Neo, settle down. So there you have it. Um, we have the reporting. We have the resolution. We have remarks from Cheney and Kinzinger. As far as my thoughts, I've given you the commentary along the way. The Republican Party has ceased to be a functioning political party or a loyal opposition to the Democratic Party. Um, they've long since... Uh, cease to be that. They are an active obstructionist radical movement that are more loyal to Donald Trump and Donald Trump's personal politics and personal agenda and personality than they are the United States, than they are to the Constitution. Um, they've made it clear as an organization uh, they will gladly trade um, you know, fidelity to their oath, fidelity to the Constitution for political expediency. And, and I think in many cases it's not because they actually personally like Trump. Um, I think just many, they, for many of them, they see the writing on the wall that Trump is the messianic figure of the Republican religion. And many among the Republican base do have a genuine love for this guy. So Republican leaders in the Senate and in the House, they may not personally like him. They may hate his guts, but they see the writing on the wall. They feel where the wind is blowing, and they're going to turn their sail accordingly. And they're going to try to, you know, 
uh, stay ahead of it. So it's disgusting. It's disingenuous. It's cynical. Um, but that's the Republican Party. As far as Cheney and Kinzinger are concerned, like I said, they're not heroes. I'm not going to beatify them. I think the Democrats should say what they need to say to milk this situation for what it's worth. I think Democrats should lionize Cheney and Kinzinger only in as much as it's politically useful. Because at the end of the day, if we're being honest, Cheney and Kinzinger, by being active supporters of the Republican Party in the lead up to the 2016 uh, presidential election and then throughout the four years of Donald Trump's term, they have in one way, shape, or form actively contributed to this situation. So I'm not going to I, I'm not going to suggest that we throw them a parade for doing their jobs unless it's something that the Democrats can benefit from. So those are my thoughts on the matter. Um, I'm sure in the next couple of days, the GOP will do something else that is equally or even more crazy than this. And we'll talk about it because the GOP sucks. And that's the thesis of this video, probably the thesis of this channel. And I look forward to pondering politics and pop culture with you all again very soon. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Now, we're looking to grow the channel as aggressively as possible this year. So if you haven't yet, we'd really appreciate it if you like, subscribe, and follow us on any or all of our social media pages. The links are below. And whether you agree or disagree with the contents of this particular video, you are welcome to leave a comment because we are always open to constructive feedback and discourse. And on that note, I look forward to pondering politics and pop culture again with you real soon.